Conqueror's Blade is a free-to-play multiplayer siege RPG that combines action combat with tactical unit control. I initially covered this game during its closed beta, but since then the game has had numerous updates and improvements that's really seen a big boost in positive reviews on Steam. Disclosure, this video is sponsored by Conqueror's Blade. The game has just launched its Season 2 with a bunch of new content, so if you like what you see then click the link in the description below to check it out. Also, apologies for my messed up voice in this video. I've got a bit of a throat infection at the moment. So, starting out you go through some kind of siege tutorial that gives you a taste of what's to come. You cut your way through hordes of cannon fodder, you're introduced to some basic controls, and then you're asked a few questions by the game that helps determine your initial starting stats. After that you need to make a character, but unlike the last time I played this game, you can't pick a weapon during character creation. After a short cinematic, you're spawned into the world and need to choose between normal or cinematic camera type. I prefer to play with normal. Next we're sent to the training area. Here you're able to test each of the 10 weapons you have access to in this game. At launch there were only 8 weapons, but since then dual blades and short bows have been added to the game. At this point I highly recommend you spend a good amount of time picking the right weapon as they each feel completely different and you might not enjoy the game as much if you don't pick something that fits your playstyle. The last time I played this game I picked the Poleaxe and it felt way too static for me. This time I went for the Nodachi and had a much better time. After you've picked a weapon the game puts you through a series of tutorials that show you how to control your units, you're taught how to change formations, how to attack, how to change units and how to capture capture objectives. You then need to choose between four different regions to start from, each of which have different units and products. I picked the desert zone, but when I spawned in the world it was covered in snow. Interesting desert you've got there. I clicked on the nearest town and started smashing out quests. I was given a horse, taught how to unlock and recruit units, and I was then grouped with some other players to do a training battle against AI. After we steamrolled the AI in about 5 minutes, I was taught how to control archer units, and the game ran a bunch of cavalry units into my spearmen for some reason. I was then finally thrown into my first game of PvP. Units, assemble! I was having so much more fun with the game this time around now that I picked a weapon that I actually enjoyed. I'm not too sure if the other players were just really bad or if they were AI, but I was getting way more kills than I got the last time I played. After that the game gave me a tutorial for the castle siege mode and taught me how to move the battering ram, the siege tower, call in catapult strikes and scale the walls. I was then thrown into an actual castle siege where I put what I learned into practice. I decided to do one more battle which gave me another quick victory and at this point I started feeling cocky and got a false sense of me being good at the game. I hardly died, I was top kills on my team most games, so I decided to jump on a near max level character and see how I stacked up against the veterans. This character I was playing on had access to the best units, epic gear and had all the skill points it needed. Well, I was about to receive a hard lesson in get good and my overconfidence was quickly stomped into the ground. So 
Something I noticed was that the endgame players played with a lot more strategy and most of their kills actually came from smart use of their units. I felt like a complete and utter noob just trying to charge at them constantly and felt a bit bad for dragging my team down so much, but at least I was able to get a realistic idea of how high the skill cap is at endgame. Honestly, I think I lacked patience and it seems a slower, more strategic approach is much better than brute force in this game. Overall, I think Conqueror's Blade is in a much better place now than when I first tried it. The new player experience has greatly improved and does a way better job of teaching people how to play. In addition, I also really like that you can try all of the weapons once you get into the game rather than picking one during character select and this resulted in me enjoying the game a lot more this time around. If you're watching this video as someone who's not a fan of PvP, you do have the option of doing some PvE only type battles called Expeditions. In addition, something I didn't touch on much in this video is there's territory wars at certain times of the day where guilds and alliances can fight to control land. You've also got 1v1 duels you can do inside of cities. I tried it, but as you'd imagine, I just made a fool of myself. <sighs> But that's it for this video guys, let me know your thoughts on Conqueror's Blade in the comments below and shout out to the devs for the sponsorship so I can eat in January as it's by far the worst month for YouTube and ad revenue. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you again really soon.